okay so welcome to this uh, video basically i'll be doing the uh, class exercise for penetration testing 2024 okay so i assume your color linux is up and running uh, depending on the uh, way you use your color if it's virtual box whatsoever so I'm using VirtualBox, it's up and running. So make sure again the internet connection is available. So just make sure that we connect to the network. Okay, so now I'm connected. We can begin. So the question says conduct a detailed recognizance and information gathering on the following website domains. So basically we are given this domain which is for the university of south africa so just a disclaimer uh, we are not making any malicious uh, activities on the network but it's just for academic purposes only yeah so uh, number one they're saying still a web page index file of the target organization's website you need to do is to go on your card then open your terminal okay so once you are on your terminal the first thing you need to do is to make sure that you have privilege uh, uh, privileges for you to run certain tasks so first thing you want to say sudo so so by saying sudo so it means you want to request for some admin privileges. So you hit enter, then you enter your password for your card. So by default, the password is card. Okay. So as you can see, now we have switched from the user mode to the root mode. So we are having something like a blue at Kari Kari now we're having something in red so it means by doing that you have the privilege uh, mode or privilege privileges so if you want you can just equally select a terminal uh, which has admin privileges it's retain root which is made like this so it's up to you to go direct if you want so let's now follow the question still a web page index file of the target organization's website since we answered a uh, all we need to do is say w get uh, w get then the website you're targeting which is www dot nisa dot sc dot zd so by running this command you are telling the I am telling you terminal that go go ahead and download the index file for this target website. So the command to use is wget. So you hit enter, then you wait for it to uh, start initializing until it downloads the index file for you. Okay. So if you are unable to retrieve the host uh, name that given address. Let's say up to bring back the previous command. Then let's get rid of that www so that it can be wget unisa.zd. Then we try. So enter. Okay, so as you can see, the index file is being downloaded. So, like uh, my connectivity wasn't that strong so I'm back to game UI files you okay so once the index file is downloaded you need to check if the file exists so to say OS to list any file or directory in this particular directory or folder which is the home directory so enter so as you can see I have two index files so uh, just remove them both then i just remain with at least one index file for this example so rm which means remove 
so uh, after that the file you want to remove so for example index and uh, the HTML so let me remove that again I repeat the same command and this time around uh, dot one so once all the files have been removed I'll try to list again then I'll check that okay I don't have any related uh, index HTML file so let me repeat the command which is wget again for me to get the index file okay okay so once that is done we can now confirm by listing the directories of files by saying ls so as you can see we only have one index.html file which is good because we'll be knowing that we are only interested in the unisa.se.za index file and like having multiple index files which can bring a certain uh, confusion so let's go to question two so look over the index file paste a part of the index file on a separate web document so basically what you need to do to look over the files there are uh, certain commands we can use such as cut and move so for this example i'll use more because i know that the index file is too long for me to say cut if i say cut it just give me the end results but if i want to view some content i would say more for me to view a certain percentage so i'll say more then space the index file meaning the name of the same index file which is index.html so if you say enter now you can see some part if you continue entering the percentage will be increasing okay so once you, are, you take a screenshot of the thing you are interested in you can simply say ctrl z to exit that All right so question one and two is done so now we go to question three okay identify subdomains within the target index file using appropriate commands so this is the index file we are talking about or oh, let me list it again so that we confirm so in card i'll say os for me to list so this is the same index file we are talking about so as you can see it has some of the subdomains within the main domain so the first thing we need to say is cut like want to view the file then index uh, index index.html then space so here i'll say pipe then i'll say grape now i want to tell uh to tell it the things i'm interested in so the things i want to look for uh specifically h life uh, h leaf the thing which can link an html file to a certain link so i want to, uh, I want the command to search for anything related to the href. So after that, I'll say pipe again. Then we need to cut out the sub, uh, subdomain. So I'll say cut dot d uh, dash d. Then for the subdomains, I'm not I'm not really sure how many subdomains we have. So uh, that's the meaning. Then again, we say another pipe. Now this time around, uh, I'll say grape again what are we looking for uh since we are interested in the subdomains from this site so what's what was the name for the site it was unisa dot sc dot z like that so that's our target now the last thing you need to do is say more so the command for finding out the subdomains which is the first one is done like that so let me repeat again cut index dot means you want to view the file then grab uh, href means you want to you want this uh, file you are viewing to concentrate on the hrefs uh, links or anything related to the href then again we need to cut out the subdomains from this uh, main domain so that's the command but if you want to master it just know it has four pipes which is one two three four five six seven eight 
two, three, and four. The first one is cut, uh, grape, then cut, grape, and more. So if we, we hit enter, we can see that we end up with certain uh, subdomains. But unfortunately, some of the subdomains are being repeated. Like for example, nisa.ac.z is being repeated multiple times, and some staffs are not clear. So for us to clear out this thing, we need to use uh, the second command which will sort out these subdomains into something which is more clean. So for now, following the question, we'll use those commands and we'll see other ways uh, on how we can do this. So I'll say up to bring the previous command, then I'll delete them more, then I'll start at cut. So we say cut. Cut. Then what are we trying to cut now? Again, these are the subdomains. So we will do that. Oh, by the way, it's dash d first. So you say dash d because the subdomains. Then this time around, you're using f1. Then you say pipe. So after that, we need to say sort because we need to sort out some subdomains. So it says sort dash u. Then we we'll use a greater than symbol. Now, after this greater than symbol, we need to create a file which will save these uh, clear subdomains. So it's up to you to decide the name of the file. Let me give an example. We will say Unisa underscore sub domains dot txt was we want to save this uh, output which is sorted more like a clean version of this into this txt file. So now you can hit enter if everything is okay. Okay. Now, to see if this command really worked, we need to view the file. So this time around, I'll use cut to view the file. So I'll say cut, then space, name of the file, as you can see, which is unisa, and that's all, uh, subdomains.txt. So as you can see now that we view this file, we only have uh, three subdomains, which is coming out of that. So that was the way to answer question three so now what other way can we do for us to come up with this so imagine you know this first command which ends at more you can copy this end results like this then once you copy the end results you can equally create a text file to save these things and clear the manually for you to get these end results. So I'll show you how to do that because this is what we did. We had this, and then we used this command to clear out this to come up with this, and it was saved in this file. So meaning the first step you'd like to do is to create a file where you save your output. So I'll say for this one, I'll just say sub. Uh, anyway, so creating a file, we can equally use nano or touch. So let's use nano. I'll say nano. Then the file I want to create. So this time around, I'll just say sub. Then do txt. Cause txt. Cause I already have uh, unisa underscore subdomains txt. So I just want you to see this outcome again. So here I'll say enter. Then this window will pop up. So I just need to paste my selection. Then after doing that, it's up to me now to analyze which files are being repeated. As you can see, we have unisa.zd, which is OK. But again, we have unisa.s repeated here. So I'll get rid of this like that. OK. Now, this we don't want. 
and then as you can see that uh, mooc.unisa.za that's our first time seeing it so I'll just leave it the way it is then again we have this one which is shop I'll leave it the way it is and then the list because they are repeating which is unisa.se.za I'll get rid of that so that we save our txt file like that so we have cleared the manually then what we need to do is say control x and then y enter to save so let's see if we have this file which is sub.txt i'll say ls to list so if we list you can see that we have this file which is sub.txt okay so now we can equally try to view the file so i'll say cut to view that file so this time around the file is sub uh, .txt. so if you view the file you realize that you end up with those same results so this was just to show you that you can equally do this manually so since we are not interested in this but question three was uh, using those appropriate commands which i've shown you already i'll just remove this file because it's not wanted for this so i say rm meaning remove the, uh, the name of the file which is sub.txt so i've removed it i'll say ls to confirm so as you can see i don't have that file in this uh, home directory on my card as a user so that was the meaning so now let's go to question number four it says write up a bash shell script to find subdomains corresponding ip addresses so now this same subdomains which is shop.unisa.se.z and the following ones need to have a certain corresponding ip address so i'll first use bash shell script to prove that then we we'll do a manual work again to come up with our own IP addresses. Okay, so the first thing, if you are talking about bash scripting, you need to understand that you need to know which uh, which here we are using first. So the command to say is which, more like you want to find out something or to find a certain location, then you say dollar sign uh, capital letters here. So you are asking your term, you know, like what shell am I using? So it's like which shell? So if you hit enter, you see that you are under your user, which is correct, then slash bin slash z shell, sh is for shell. So with that information, you can tell that you're not using bash shell. So we need to make our own bash shell. So the first step is to come up with the name of the file which will represent the shell so for example since the question talks about subdomains i will just call it uh, that subdomains like unisa underscore subdomains then we'll make it a shell so i'll say nano to create a file so oh, let me use more letters nano to create a file so the file i want to create is unisa then underscore subdomains now this time around won't be dot txt but it will be a dot sh to present here as you can see for z here i said z here because it was sh meaning here so now no meaning let's create a uh, this file which will present a shell as you are seeing then you hit enter now uh if you saw the previous way or now the shell was lit it was user slash bin slash z shell so we need that format uh, again but this time around you use uh hashtag exclamation mark slash now we follow up bin then slash instead of saying z shell we say bash because that's the shell we want dot sh we will have it uh, under this same file as you can see dot sh so meaning this is a shell but what shell do you want it's bash so this is called shebang so i'll hit enter now uh, under network 
question what you need to know for bash scripting is that always start with for dash in dollar sign open brackets whatsoever so what we mean is that okay so you say for since our target this time around is the urls the ones we saw so we say for url in dollar sign open and close bracket okay so now since uh our urls was part of that index file so you need to say cut the name of that uh, index file uh, like the file we created after the index file which contained those urls it was nisa nisa underscore subdomains dot txt so that's the uh, txt file which is containing the urls we want so once you say let's do this file by saying cut you need to use a uh, same colony then say do now since we want to turn these urls into ip addresses so okay so now we need to say host because we're interested in the ip addresses so if you say host again you say dollar sign url then done so let me explain once more on these commands so these have explained now if you say for url in dollar sign it means we want to concentrate on the urls so what the dollar sign does is that it matches the things you are targeting for example here it to match these ip addresses into uh, which are in this file to become ip addresses which is just a host uh, i wonder we are targeting the same url again with the dollar sign meaning whatever it's part of this dollar sign must match this dollar sign so once you are done again you say control x y enter for you to save that so what we need to do now is to execute that bash shell and see the outcomes of this so what you can say is say bash one way to execute you say bash the name of the file which you just created which is this which is unisa underscore sub domains dot sh not txt because want to execute this uh, bash uh, script which is inside the, this here so i'll say enter then we'll see the results or now the coming out to be so as you can see we have managed to obtain the ip addresses from these subdomains but again it's not clear enough for us to uh, execute them as just ip addresses so we need to write another bash script which will clear out these URLs, then just leave out the ip addresses so that's our next target so i'll just need to open back this file so i'll say up another app now that i'm here i'll say enter then make some few changes of this same command then we just e extract the url uh, the ip addresses not the urls so that's our next target now okay so this is the command to use i've just uh, written it by copying some because this command is complicated for me but i'll try to explain so now we just remove that cut index dotation by replacing it with grip so oh, it means that we want to focus on this thing which is that site as you can see then that in the uh, index dotation we had we need to sort to sort it out for us to obtain those uh, clean urls so that's the meaning so once you write this command you just need to say control x then y 
so you say control x y enter for you to save that okay so now let's try to execute that bash command again or oh, the the bash script by saying bash and the name of that particular file so let's try that so you yeah, just need to say bash unis underscore subdomains do tch then execute so if you execute this uh, bash here you can see now you end up with these screen ip addresses so we have used the commands to do this in bash script but you can equally just do it manually so again i'll show you since we had these uh, urls for you to obtain an ip address you just need to say pin so i'll say pin to see if we can communicate to that site so i'll start with this one say mock then dot unisa dot sc dot zd so i want to see if i'll end up with this ip address like that so i'll say enter so once i obtain the ip address i'll cancel by saying control c so as you can see for mock the ip address was coming out to be in this one which has dot 83 and for sure we have obtained it with a pin command so let's confirm for this one which is shop dot nisa dot ac dot zd so i'll remove the word mock okay so just get rid of this mock then put so here i'll just say show for me to target that second ip address so again once i obtain the ip address i'll just say control c uh, let me see my network first let me check let me check okay so we can try to confirm with that ip address for show ends with dot 34 so let me scroll up then we confirm so as you can see for sure it ends with dot 34 so now we need to try out the last one which is for just ww to test it see if it ends with dot 55 so i'll remove that shop and then say ww like that so let's try to see if we get something which ends with dot 55 so as you can see that's the ip address which is correct now that you have obtained these three ip addresses manually you can just create your txt file which has these ip addresses so i won't show you that because we, uh, we've talked about that you just need to say now the name of the file you want to create at the end you set the txt then you save these three ip addresses by saying you write these ip addresses then you say draw x y and save that txt file then now you can try to view it by saying cut then you cut that uh, name file of this txt which has ip addresses then you see that you end up with that green thing we had uh, after writing the second bash script which is this right so since our screen is messed up i'll say clear clear out to the uh, commands i've entered so far so now we have that screen teaming. okay so question five write up a bunch of script to echo a range of ip addresses so now we know how to come up with the bash script so that's uh, that will be our first step we need to say nano we are creating something then we want to create a an echo bash script so for to make it unique i'll say echo then underscore uh, okay uh, let me just say echo.sh so i want to use bash scripting 
by equaling those IP addresses based on the range I want. But this is up to you to decide. We know what this means now. You hit enter. Now, the first thing is to write this, which means she been. I've explained that, so I won't repeat. Now, we know that we need to start for. Now, what's our target? It's an IP. So I'll say for IP in dollar sign, open and close bracket. Now, this time around in between, we won't say cut, but we will say sec for sequence. So, sequence now it's up to you to decide the IP address range you want. So, for this example, just say 0 to 5. Just write that sec space 0 space 5, meaning you want a sequence from 0 to 5. Then say semicolon it do. Now, at the bottom, we put what's our target. So, our target is echo. So, you say echo. Now, you need at least to know an IP address of that thing you did. So, for now, I'll just save this by saying Control X, Y, and Enter. But I haven't done uh, the finishing stuff. So, let me list the things I have. Then, where are our IP addresses in this folder? So, I'd like to view, uh, to, I would like to run that bash script which has the IP addresses so that we at least know an IP address. So since this is our IP address we're interested in, I'll copy this IP address. Oh, let me even copy this one. You can target anything. So you copy that IP address. Remember, I've left out a four, so I'll include it. Now, let's go back to nano echo.sh. Now we continue. Since we know the IP address yeah. we are interested in, we want to echo. So I just need to paste that. Then remember it had a 4 at the start. So I, I'll put a 4. Then we can proceed. Okay, now. Since this is an IP address, so under subnet, we learned that this last portion is basically the host part. So we need to get rid of that because that's where we decide the range we want. So here, I'll just remove that last part. Then I'll say dollar sign, meaning I want it to match something with this sequence. So this dollar sign tells us we want to match something from 0 to 5. And this dollar sign will make sure that this happens. But what are we trying to match? It's an IP. So you say IP at the end. Then enter. You say done. As simple as that. So this is well explained, I'm sure. So you say over again by saying Control X, Y, and end. Now, let's learn that bash script by saying bash. Then what, what was the name? It's echo, so echo.sh. So if we click enter, we will see that the IP addresses will be echoed from 0 to 5, meaning the range we created is from 1 to 5, and it's accurate based on this target IP we had, the second one. For mock.unisa.sh.zdm. Uh, so we tried to echo this. Now, we are done with question five. So what echo means is that it will uh, give you the feedback which you tell it. For example, if you say James, it will echo back James. So this is the meaning. We told it to echo back IP addresses from zero to five, and it did. So that's the meaning. Now, six, wipe up a bash your script, send still the ICMP request as a ping swiper. So, we'll do the same. We need to create first um, a file or uh, anything like uh, a file which has a certain bash script for ping. But this time around, I just say ping.sh. 
So we want to create a shear for the ping, but it's up to you to decide. It cannot be ping as long as it ends with sh, then what's inside the shell? It's a ping uh, script, then it's good. So let's do that. Then again, we start now. This, you know, we start like that. We say bin slash bash. Then after doing that, again, start for since we're interested in the IPs again. So go up to there so again we we'll say for ip because we can only ping an ip address. so say for ip in dollar sign open and closed bracket semicolon it do then in between these brackets i need to say sec because i need to know the sequence again so i use the same sequence which is 0 to 5 then instead of saying echo we will say ping because we are interested in the ping. Now, the question says uh, we are sending stealth ICMP requests. So, if you say dash C1, it means you are trying to send ICMP requests. And we know what this means, but for the sake of not making this video long, you know that. Then, space again. If we said dash w1, it means we are trying to send stealthy uh, requests to that targeted thing. So as you can see, now stealth, the meaning is that you want to make something difficult to find or to detect. It's more like you are avoiding being noticed. That's the meaning. So we'll be requesting uh, to see if we can communicate with that site but avoiding for them to know that we are trying to communicate with them so the last thing you would say is to say dash q for you to be quiet that's the meaning quiet then now what was the ip address we had so again i've forgotten i'll just say control x y enter save then see the ip address which is this the one we were getting before so I'll copy that IP address again, then go back to my nano ping.sh, then I continue. Now, here I'll need to paste that IP address I want to ping. Remember, we are not pinging an IP address, but a bunch of IP addresses because of that range. So again, at the end, remember, we said we need to remove this waste part, then say dollar sign. IP, meaning we want to match this uh, IP address range from 0 to 5. That's the meaning. Then, since we are done now, understanding and writing this, just say done. Then, you uh, end. Now, here we say control X and Y, enter save. Then, we try to run this, uh, this script we have written, which has a ping. Like that, ping.sh. So, if you do that it will start sending packets uh, on those five targeted uh, IP address with uh, the intent of avoiding notice so that's the meaning so we are done from question one up to six what you need to do now to repeat these same stages for any selected website of your choice so mind you, those targeted websites you'll be using, you need to make sure that you can download the index file. The index file has subdomains for you to carry out everything. So if that's not the case, keep on searching till you find it. Okay, so this is Scott James representing KMU Cyber Security Tutorials. See you in the next video.